Welcome back to another video of Manor Lords. Today we're going to be having a basic look at farming and what that involves in Manor Lords and how to go about it successfully. As you can see here, I've got uh, a number of farm setups, some large fields and some small fields. We'll just run over some quick basics of field management. When you create a field, you get to build a, now you can either elect to make a large farm, something like that. It doesn't cost you anything. And that was about 0.7 or 0.8 uh, Morgan. Now what I've done here is I've created some larger, about 1.2, 1.3 Morgan's these size form uh, fields. And these ones are about uh, 0.3 each. So it's the bigger ones and smaller ones. Now the reason I've done this is because of your plowing and sowing seasons. And as you can see here, you can see here in autumn from September to November, it says harvesting, plowing and sowing. What that means is that come September, you've got one month to basically harvest all your crop. You've got another month to plow your fields and then you've got another month to sow your crops. And once winter hits, once December hits, that's it. You, you can't do it anymore. So what happens in the game currently, and hopefully they're going to fix this over time. If you've got your people plowing this field, they might get that one done. And then they might be working on this one and might get that one done. But there might be a third field you've got and you're trying to get that one to get done, which is what happened to me. I had a third field like this. They get to about 80% completion on that field. And then winter hits and you've lost all the work done on that field. So if you don't get it 100% complete, which is shown here, plowing progress 100%, and then sowing progress 100%, if you don't hit that by the time winter comes in December, then you lose all that progress for the entire field. So this is why you will see some people using smaller fields like this or a, a different shape, it doesn't matter how, but how you prefer to do it about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 Morgans. Because what happens is your people will plow this field and sow it. They'll do this one and I'll move on to that one and that one. And if you hit December or winter while you're doing this one, at least you've still got these two fields 100% completed so they will grow and provide you crop rather than the whole field being useless and not providing anything. So that's why you'll see people using smaller fields in their setups so that they don't lose when they're trying to plow and sow their fields. Now in order to quickly plow your fields, it is a good idea to invest in the heavy plow with one of your development points. This enables you to do an upgrade at the farmhouse to get an ox. And this farmhouse has the upgrade. Uh, here it is here. I can attach the ox here if I wanted to, which you'll see now. Now it's gathering. But that's the ox that atta is attached to this farmhouse. And what will happen is the ox will come over and start plowing the fields when the time is right. There's obviously nothing to plow at the moment. And by my calculations, in one season, I can, between September and November, I can plow that field with an ox, that field, and I can get nearly another 1.2 field done as well. So. These are both 1.2, so that's 2.4 Morgan in total. So you could probably say an ox can successfully plow about three Morgan of field by itself in two months. And then your people are moving in behind it. If you've got a full farm like this, they will quickly move in behind the ox and start sowing. And they should be able to get three Morgan worth of fields done, uh, probably more with this amount of people. So the idea with the oxes and farms is the way I would do this is I would have a whole area of farming. I think they should make farms cost resources too, by the way. I, I think it's not right that they allow farms to be built at no cost pretty much. Let's imagine we had these farms and how, how, how large you want to make it. But what I would do is I would put the more farmhouses around this farm because it's only costing me three wood, right? So I'll just imagine we put a farmhouse there and we put another one there. Because what happens is 
rather than having one farmhouse operate a lot of these farms, I because you're limited to one ox per farm, you can't have more than that. Okay, you can't you can't can't put more oxes in there. But once I've built these, I can I could equip an ox here and an ox here. So this ox could look after these farms. This ox could look after this farm. So they would get this area ploughed much faster, and then my people can sow. And then I could go right. Let's take uh, uh, these ones off and put them into there, and put some people into there, and spread it out with an ox. And people were going to be a lot more efficient doing it that way. So you can run your big fields if you're prepared to have an ox and uh, more farmhouses around. If you want that more aesthetic peeling for your farms rather than having uh, lots of little farms like this or you might want to have it like um, something like say like like that I've seen people doing designs like this make them smaller which personally I don't really like the look of that so much I prefer the bigger odd shaped farms and fields and mix and matching it's not too bad, but it just starts to look a bit silly when you get quite a few of them in a row. And it doesn't look like it would historically. So that's how you can really get efficiency by having more farmhouses, because they cost three timber, and use more oxen. But obviously to get the oxen, you have to buy the oxen with regional wealth, which you need to generate in that town to be able to use. And the other thing with the oxen is when it's finished plowing your fields, you don't need to keep them here. You can go in here and take the oxen off and the oxen can go back to helping with construction and whatever else you want to use in your village now let's say you happen to miss the grow uh, the harvesting plowing and sowing crops in autumn because then you hit winter and you want to build some new fields and maybe in a new village or you just forgot about it. you can build the fields over winter get them ready for the spring and your farmers and um, oxen will plow the fields come March. They will start to plow the fields between March and May and they will sow them there and then they get to grow over summer. And once you get to September, October, you can harvest them. Now you won't have the same amount of resources as if you um, plowed and sowed your fields in the previous September, November, because you've lost basically four to six months of planting and growing time. But you will generate probably about 60 to 70 percent of the yield that you'll get from these fields so you can see here my yield is 70. i've got 56 days to harvest because i planted these fields in september to november the previous year these fields only went down in early this year in between march and may you can already see they are growing they're growing at 42 percent so in the next 56 days, that'll go up a fair bit. Not won't reach 100%, but it will it will go up a fair number. And you can see the different fields are growing to a little bit little bit behind because they were sowed a little bit later as the people worked across the field. And this field is a bit lower because it's got lower percentage of fertility. And that's where having a crop rotation comes in. And one of the good things you can do is a nice setup for your crop rotation is I'll just build another field a little bit smaller but what you can do is you can have say two fields here and two fields here now let's set them for um, wheat turn on crop rotation and then we'll have uh, fallow and followed by wheat and then we'll turn this one onto the same wheat crop rotation That'll be fallow the next year and then wheat for the last year. So that we've got three different seasons and this will allow the fertility to rise up and we'll have wheat here. Now for these two, let's change it up. Let's say this is the fallow year for that. Turn on crop rotation and then we'll have wheat, wheat or whatever, whatever, uh, plants you're growing here, whatever type of food source you want. If you've got barley or flax, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got one season of fallow. And then we change, so that's fallow, crop rotation on. Return. Wheat. And then wheat. 
So the first season is fallow, so that's going to help it increase in fertility and rate remain its strength. And while these fields are fallow, these fields are growing. So that, and then when these fields are fallow, these fields are growing. And then when this field's fallow, these are growing. So you've always got a, a constant supply of uh, food coming in despite you using the crop rotation on this. So that makes it pretty simple. And I like to keep my uh, windmill and a communal oven close by to reduce transport times. Another thing you can also do is pop down a, um, either a storehouse or granary uh, nearby if you need to, to limit the amount of uh, travel time that you have to use and using of the other storehouses because you don't want to constantly have to be taking things all the way through uh, your village to the other storehouses it takes a lot of time and it's just you know creates a lot of logistics trouble so we've got a storehouse here and in there you can set what resources you want to take so this one you might turn off crops barley and flux that we're growing for here turn it off and you might just leave the other resources that you're using for this town and then just have the storehouse up here solely for the food so that uh, you're not double double transporting it from all the way up here, all the way in here. Your, your farmers can just take it into there and then straight into the windmill and the oven and then they can transport it to wherever they need. So that's generally the way I would handle farming so that it doesn't uh, have to become too complicated or too much of a problem. And do use those oxen, multiple farms. If you want the larger farm layouts, which I think are just are more efficient and it, it looks better and you can you can make them larger than this as well you can make one big farm like this if you wanted to but you just got to be careful you probably don't make it more than three morgan because your oxen won't be able to get it plowed in time for the uh, winter and your people may not have enough time to sow it either so you don't want to put all eight people on there to get it sowed in time so just keep that in mind it's good to maybe make a save at the start of your uh, farming season and then play around it a little bit so you can always reload it go back to it and readjust things so you get the most efficiency out of your farming and as the game progresses you can obviously move into some of the more advanced features of the game you've got bakeries there where you can increase your efficiency for communal ovens fertilization to allow a fallow field as pasture which rapidly restores lost fertility Irrigation dramatically lowers the amount of damage caused when you get a bad drought year when you play on the harder difficulty levels. And rye cultivation, that just unlocks rye, which is like a different form of wheat, which maybe you have better um, fertility in your territories for that. Okay, so if you like this video, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a lot of helpful guides and uh, playthrough series. I'm doing a, a playthrough series now on the hardest settings possible to try and see how far I can get into the game and what challenges and, and uh, ha uh, problems the game will throw at me along the way. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.